Okay, here's our question. Have a read of it. The question is, what values of k and n does the following set of equations have an infinite number of solutions? We have two equations here, and you can see by looking at them that they're both linear equations. There are no squares or cubes or square roots or log functions or anything like that, so we know that these two are linear equations. <clears throat> so if these equations had no solutions, when you graph both of the equations, they would look like this. There would be parallel lines, and they would both have the same gradient. So if you rearrange both the equations into the form of y equals mx plus c, they would have the same value for m. Let's say equation, the m value in equation 1 is equal to the gradient in equation 2. But they could not have the same value for the y-intercept, aka c. So c1 cannot equal c2. Otherwise, they'd just be the same equation. They'd be laid on top of each other. So this is no solutions. If they were the same value for c and the same value for m, you'd have a situation where the first line looks like this. It doesn't necessarily have to be a positive gradient. And the second line would also look exactly the same. be laid over the top of it. And each point on the graph would be a solution. And as you know, in a linear equation, there are an infinite number of points on it. So that's the situation we're after. And um, we know this happens when the values of C are the same and the values of M are also the same. Well, <clears throat> there is another way that a lot of you were tempted to solve this equation this um, problem, and that was by inspection. So you could have seen that, well, for both these equations to be the same, you would have to have the same coefficients of x, the same coefficients of y, and your right-hand side of the equation would have to be the same. I'll, I'll just do it that way to show you what you would have got. So you would have got, well, k equals 2. From the coefficients of y, if you let them equal to each other, you'd say 4 equals k plus 2, which would just result in k equals 2 when you solve it, and from the right-hand side of the equation, you'd have 2n equals negative 1. You solve that, you get n equals negative 1 over 2. A lot, of, a lot of my students actually did this, but it turns out this is not the full story. To figure out all the solutions, you would have had to convert both of these equations into the form of y equals mx plus c, and then um, go on from there. So I'm going to show you what you should have done <clears throat> well, if you're watching this video, I would like you to try right now to convert both of these equations into the form of y equals mx plus c. So just pause your video and give that a shot. I'm going to assume you just did that, and I'm going to show you what you should have got. So, um, if you converted equation 1, into the form of y equals mx plus c, you should have gotten that equation there, y equals negative k over 4x plus n over 2. Yeah. And equation 2, which we are going to call, once it's rearranged, we're going to call it equation 4, well, you would have got y equals negative 2 over k plus 2x minus negative 1 over k plus 2. All right, so from this, from this step, we can say that for, a, for the situation where you have an infinite number of solutions to arise, that the values of m must be the same. So we're going to let our values for m be the same. So m1 is going to be negative k over 4, and m2 is going to be negative 2 over k plus 2. So we can write that equation down. And from here, once you write that down, it's fairly easy to see that this equation is solvable because you've got one equation and only one unknown which is k. If you rearrange that equation to try to make k the subject you can multiply both sides by 4 and you would get k equals 8 over k plus 2. Great. Now from here you want to get all your k's on one side so we'll multiply both sides by k plus 2. You get k times k plus 2 equals 8. 
great. Um, you can expand that and take away eight from both sides. It's not too difficult. And now you get a quadratic equation. K squared plus 2K minus 8 equals 0. From looking at that, um, you can see that there could be up to two solutions because it is a quadratic equation. So how do you find those solutions? Well, you've got two options here. You just use the quadratic equation, just plug everything into the formula and figure out what your value for k is. Or um, the simpler and quicker method is to factorize this one just because it is such a simple equation. So two numbers that multiply to equal negative eight are gonna be, well, negative two and four and negative 2k plus 4k equals 2k. So um, this equation factorized is going to be this equation here. Um, so I was just using the, the cross method in my head just then to do that. All right, well, applying the null factor law, you know what k is gonna be. In order for this equation to be zero, k has got to be either four or positive, sorry, negative four or positive two. So that's what we could write down. Great, we've got our k values for this question. So the question was, we're trying to find values of k and n. So we found the, the values of k. Um, what we can do now is um, try to find our values for n. And our c values, so the y-intercepts in both our equations can help us with that. If we, from what I said at the start, for um, an infinite number of solutions to arise, the values of the y-intercept, so you know, c values, you want to call them that, they must be equal to the same thing. So n plus 2 must be equal to negative 1 over k plus 2. If you write that equation down, it looks like that. And now, because we're trying to just find, um, find n, you can multiply both sides by 2, just to make it look a bit simpler. And now we've got this equation. So... To solve for n, for a given value of k, all we need to do is substitute our k values in. Um, we know from earlier that our values of k were negative 4 and 2. So I'm going to substitute negative 4 into k first and see what I get for n. Do that, and we get, we substitute k equals negative 4, we get n equals 1. Which is great, that's one set of solutions for n and k. The other set is just found by substituting the other possibility for k, which was 2, and what we wrote down earlier, k equals 2, into that equation. And once we've done that, we get k equals, sorry, n equals a negative a half when k equals 2. And that's basically the question. All you have to do now is write down your answer properly. <clears throat> so one set of possibilities was k equals negative 1 and n equals, sorry, k equals negative 4 and n equals 1. <laughs> Or, now it's important that you say or, because that separates these two. You can't have um, k equals negative 4 and n equals any other number. Um, so you have to write it like this. When you substituted k equals 2, you got n equals negative half. So that has to be um, written like this. k equals negative 2 and n equals negative half. And the or just separates those two possible sets of solutions. And that's how you do this question um, about simultaneous equations. Thank you.